Howdy, Kanaju here. No Man's Sky's procedural universe is full of quintillions of planets and dozens of gameplay loops. Over the years, Hello Games have added new features with a consistency that would scare most developers. Some of these, like base building and companion adoptions, are beloved by players and updated often. However, in today's video, we're looking at the ones you probably completely forgot about. If you make it to the end of this video, and you're surprised by any of these, I hope you'll leave me a like. Without further ado, these are 6 features in No Man's Sky you probably forgot about. Number 1. Byte Beat Library Did you know you can change the radio station in No Man's Sky? Well, sort of anyways. The Byte Beat music synthesizer was added to the game back in 2019, allowing players to procedurally generate and modify their own soundtracks within their bases. Byte Beats are an important part of base building for many players. However, most people aren't aware that this feature received an upgrade in 2021 as part of the Frontiers update. The newly added ByteBeat library is a music player that you can use outside of your base. Whether you're flying between planets or exploring on the surface, you can take your tracks on the go. Track sharing, playlist creation, and even Quicksilver tracks are all supported. But for the life of me, I never see anyone using this stuff. That includes myself, who loves ByteBeat for my bases, but never uses the library. This is probably due to it only being accessible from the quick menu, as well as the chiptune-like music rarely being preferable to the procedural soundtrack for most people. With the introduction of jukeboxes to planetary settlements, hopefully they'll give us more in-universe music to choose from in the future. Number 2. Exocraft Races What if I told you that not only can you create custom race tracks with checkpoints on any planet in No Man's Sky, but that the feature has been in the game since 2017. Would you believe me? Well, you better, because Exocraft races were originally added alongside the vehicles themselves in the Pathfinder update. Not only can you create your own racetrack, but it also includes a leaderboard, allowing you and your friends to compete for the best time. It's a really interesting feature that I sometimes see experienced base builders explore, but on the whole, I don't think most players even know it exists. Combine this with the often overlooked car handling customization, and it's clear that Exocraft have way more potential than most people give them credit for. Hopefully in the future, Hello Games will figure out how to work these features into more accessible and rewarding game loops. Number 3. Eating Now I know what you're thinking. Everyone knows about cooking, Kanaju. We just don't care. And I feel that. I do think cooking could use some improvements. However, what I'm talking about right now is eating. You can't walk 10 feet across a planet without bumping into some form of edible resource, be it a plant or an animal. But uh, <laughs> seriously though, eating is super easy to do. But most players don't bother with it outside of certain quests. Believe it or not, eating actually gives you abilities that aren't available through any other means. Let's say you took a lot of damage from fighting sentinels. The only way to restore your health is to find a procedurally placed medkit or health station. Each use restores one health, so for heavy damage it might take some time to get back to 100%. Instead, you could just carry a stack of meat in your inventory. Every time you consume some meat, you'll restore health, so you can almost instantly refill your hit points anywhere, anytime. Sprint boosts are only available as a result of eating foods. Certain foods also grant jetpack bursts. Others can restore hazard protection and more. So by mastering culinary knowledge, you can essentially boost and restore your character on the fly. 2022's Sentinel update made this even easier, with the addition of status effects under the Consume prompt in the UI. So, not terribly necessary in normal mode, but very useful in survival and permadeath. While I always want features to be expanded and made more important, I'm glad Hello Games didn't include a hunger meter in this case but hopefully they'll do something interesting with it in the future. Number 4. Sunken Treasure Admit it, at least once as a kid you probably dreamed of digging up a chest of pirate gold marked by an X on a map. What if I told you that you could boot up No Man's Sky right now and find your very own sunken chest of treasure? Well, you can. Added in 2018's The Abyss Update, sunken treasure chests can be found buried in the sand around underwater ruins. The players actually never told about these chests though outside of the patch notes. However, after interacting with the sunken ruin, 
you will be given a single trident key. With this in hand, simply use your analysis visor to locate the hidden chest nearby. Strangely, each ruin holds three chests, despite only granting you a single key. So I'm assuming this is to offset the fact that most players won't immediately use their first key, not knowing about the chests. That way they can spend those accumulated keys at future ruins. Fun fact! This feature is so obscure that I actually hold the No Man's Sky wiki's official world record, what have you, for the most valuable aquatic treasure ever found. My drowned shark's teeth, worth an estimated uh, roughly 1.4 million units. So, hey, if you want a No Man's Sky world record, come and get it. Number 5. Base NPC Missions Now listen. I know most people complete the main base building questline in order to progress and gain rewards. However, for those of us who completed that quest several years ago, you may not be aware that your base NPCs actually have daily quests and interactions that are only available after completing the main base questline. For example, the Overseer's Tour is a daily activity in which your Overseer will ask for a photo of a specific planet in exchange for a random artifact. The multi-tool technician will offer you a new multi-tool each day, the farmer may ask for a certain plant, and uh, the viking that fixes up your exocraft, he'll actually send you on time trials and you can repeat that multiple times a day. So the next time you're looking for something to do, why not stop by your base and ask if your pals need any help? They may just have something to offer. And finally, number six, the Galactic Atlas. So. Okay, this isn't technically a part of the game, but it was introduced as a companion to it in 2018's next update. The Galactic Atlas is a companion website where you can find points of interest and hub worlds submitted by players. Despite an initial gathering of points of interest back when it launched, little has been done to it since. You can still find it linked at the top of nomansky.com, but the most useful functions are checking the current community research progress and converting portal glyphs to coordinates both of which you can do in third-party apps, such as the Assistant for No Man's Sky app, which I highly recommend. The Galactic Atlas isn't super user-friendly either, since it doesn't have a search or filter function, and it ultimately feels like a missed opportunity to give players a top-down view of the Euclid Galaxy, similar to what you would see in a game like Elite Dangerous. Additionally, since it only covers the Euclid Galaxy, sieves and bases outside of that are simply not eligible for inclusion. I hope Hello Games figures out a way to either integrate it with the game's servers so that it updates automatically, or improve the galactic map in the game itself. Because right now, the Atlas doesn't offer much value at all, and players definitely need a way to organize, filter, search, and navigate the galaxy. So hopefully that's in the cards for an upcoming update. But all right, those are my six No Man's Sky features that you probably forgot about. Be honest now, how many of these features did you forget about? Are there any that maybe I forgot about <laughs> that didn't even make it on this list? Let me know in the comments below. I read all of my comments, so I can't wait to see what you have to say. If you're feeling generous, why not leave a like or subscribe? If you're interested in more No Man's Sky and gaming content like this, subscribing's free, doesn't cost you anything. Of course, you know I do more than just lists, but check out my top 10 cities in Assassin's Creed Valhalla if you're looking for something to watch. Even if you're a No Man's Sky player, I think it may appeal to the explorer in you. But okay, that's enough channel promotion. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!